<laughs> Let me get started here. So it has some instructions. I'm going to go slightly opposite way. You know, here for questions eight and nine, uh, the, it's having you, um, you know, it says sketch electric field lines and then it do EQ potential lines. And it says, if it helps, use the FET simulation to see what they should look like and copy it over. I'm going to do it the other way because I happen to be rather familiar with both the field lines and EQ potential lines. I'm going to sketch it first. And then I will confirm it by going to the FET simulation then th that it does look like what I thought it should look like. So uh, let me do question eight first. That's much easier because it is so, <laughs> it is so symmetric. And um, so, so let me do this first as a warm up <laughs> and then we'll do question nine. So this uh, arrangement is what we call dipole charge distribution. It, um, you know, die as in two. Pole, pole is a, I guess it's a kind of a almost an uncommon word that you might use for a charge. Um, we use the word pole more commonly in the context of magnetism. But you could call electric charge an electric monopole. It's a weird way to say it, but it's not wrong. <laughs> so this is a dipole arrangement in that it has two poles. It has a positive pole and a negative pole. Um, dipole arrangements are electrically neutral and uh, it's a very uh, common way to model a lot of common real world objects like molecules. Polar molecules, <laughs> they are often uh, modeled as a dipole. And even though, yeah, anyways, so let me leave that there. You've seen the electric field lines here. So let me, uh, you've seen it before when I did a similar uh, worksheet lab uh, some time ago, more than a week ago. <laughs> so you've seen it. So let me just draw it without too much, uh, too lengthy of an explanation. I'm going to draw my electric field lines with the convention that I, um, then I associate eight lines with a single charge. So that's something I have to decide ahead of time so that I don't <laughs> kind of paint myself into a corner. So I'm drawing eight radial lines around each charge. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna connect uh, the lines from the left to the li lines to the right um, so that they kind of look reasonable. Uh, this is the easiest line to draw. I just uh, connect it straight from one to the other. Uh, the electric field lines, they point away from positive towards negative. Same thing here. And this is where I just uh, kind of need to eyeball. And you know, I might not be doing it exactly correct, it, but what I'm looking at is it's roughly the right shape. Same deal with it here. And uh, let me draw these on the bottom since they are going to basically look symmetric, mirror version of what's on the top. And I have to decide, oops, uh, it's fine. I have to decide on what to do with the other lines. So the farthest line, those are easy to decide on what to do. I'm just going to make them go straight out or in the case of the line that's coming towards the negative charge, it's coming in from infinity. Um, it's these two lines. I guess uh, from the scale of this drawing, it's gonna look like they're going out to infinity. And there will be a line that uh, looks like it's coming in from infinity. And you know, you can imagine that if somehow this drawing were bigger, that this would connect way outside here. That's fine. No, I'm just choosing not to draw it, but you can imagine that and that would be correct. So this is the electric field line. And um, when you're drawing equipotentials, let me draw the easiest equipotential first. Uh, this is the one that you see in one of the lecture videos, which is the equipotential line where I can say that the voltage is equal to zero with the convention being that voltage approaches zero as the distance approaches infinity. That's the common, common convention we use using the universal reference point of infinity. Using the convention, uh, this particular equipotential line happens to be, uh, happens to correspond to V equal to zero. And 
It, this line also happens to illustrate one of the rules about drawing equipotential lines, which is that equipotential lines are perpendicular to the electric field. And um, you can read the explanation of why in the textbook because it's uh, mathematically very um, meaningful why that is true. If you look at chapter seven <laughs> under equipotential surfaces and conductors where they talk about equipotentials, equipotential lines, they you know, show you this and they tell you why uh, equipotentials are always perpendicular to electric field lines. It has to do with the relationship between energy, potential energy, and the electric potential. And they are related this way. And um, when you are moving perpendicular to the electric field lines, that means you are moving perpendicular to the electric force. So no work is being done. That's why your electric potential doesn't change. Because you're, if you had a test to charge, your potential energy won't be changing. So, so it's a, you should understand that mathematical reason behind the rule. And knowing that rule, understanding that rule, now I can draw the remainder of the equipotential lines. And um, so this is where I just have to kind of eyeball it. Um, usually we like to draw them in a way where the spacing between them is, um, represents the same potential difference and Drawing this by hand, I won't quite be able to do that. So, you know, these spacings, they're going to be a little bit off. That's fine. So starting from here, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to draw these lines so that it remains perpendicular to the electric field lines each time they cross them. Now, how I connect from here to a point here, that's going to be where, you know, it's hard to do it by, <laughs> by hand. So, so I'm going to do my best to, to uh, reproduce the shape that I think it's supposed to have. And basically what I'm trying to enforce here is that, uh, yeah, let me do it in segment. What I'm trying to enforce here is that each time this equipotential crosses an electric field line that it should cross perpendicularly. Um, yeah close enough. Uh, so I'm just going to try to avoid where it very obviously crosses it in a way where it's uh, involving acute and obtuse angles. So, and I, I think as you draw it, I hope you see that there's, uh, that does really constrain your choices. If you are connecting this with the smooth lines, then um, wanting to make the next crossing at a 90 degree angle will um, force you to bend the equipotential lines in some particular ways. And that's, uh, um, that's why this rule is useful and why um, that, it, that alone is in, really enough to constrain what the equipotentials will look like once you have the electric field lines drawn. And that'll get it the very last exercise we'll do. Uh, I think I um, committed to way too many equipotentials. So I'm just going to erase the last two. I'm going to finish those. Um, so let me just erase this last. And I kind of messed up the very last crossing there. But, uh, you know, say roughly look perpendicular. And I messed this up here, but it is supposed to be perpendicular. And um, yeah, so that's what the equipotentials around the positive looks like. And the equipotentials around the right hand side will look basically the same. It'll look like a mirror image of what you see on the left hand side. So let me just uh, copy that over, more or less. And I'm trying a little bit to try to make the crossings perpendicular, at least, you know, not so obviously non-perpendicular. Um, so yeah, that's what the equipotential lines look like. Uh, th the potentials around the positive charge will be the positive potential and the potentials around the negative charge will be the negative potential. And there is, so I was looking in your textbook for a set of rules on drawing equipotentials. I couldn't quite find them. Um, <laughs> so you may need, oh, this, it might be under determining field from potential. But uh, what I want to point out is that um, here's a feature that you see here, which you will always see. It's that the electric field lines 
they always point from the high potential or the most positive potential to the low potential or the most negative potential. And it's easy to remember, understand this if you think in terms of the test charge. If you imagine placing a positive test charge here, then uh, like with all objects, it's going to tend to move from place of high potential energy to low potential energy. It's like a ball rolling downhill. And it, the place of high potential energy for a positive test charge is places with a high electric potential. Places with low potential energy is places with a lower potential or maybe even negative potential as it is the case here. So this positive charge will go from the high electric potential to the low electric potential and that uh, direction it'll go down in should match the direction of the electric field. So, um, so yeah, this um, the kind of looks simple. <laughs> and uh, let me uh, confirm this for a dipole charge distribution, and then we'll move on to the the non-symmetric charge distribution that you saw in for question nine. So for this question here, let me go to the FET simulation and just to uh, replicate what I drew by hand. Um, it's always easier to do this on a computer. Um, so here's the dipole distribution. Let me have the grid on so that I can place them in a convenient way. Um, somewhere here, yeah. So this is a dipole distribution. Um, and I, I guess I'll leave the electric field on so that it's uh, so that I can say something that at least resembles uh, electric field lines. So uh, it's not electric field lines, but it resembles. And this is the tool that can both measure the potential and actually draw it. So let me do that. I'm gonna find a place with a zero electric potential and draw that uh, zero potential line or you know, something close to zero. So this is the zero electric potential and I can follow it here. Let me, uh, let's see. Let me do it in a spacings of, I don't know, seven volts. So I'll go up to here, seven volts. Yeah, this is the one thing that program lets me do that I couldn't hope to do by hand, which is drawing the key potential lines with the actual equal spacing in potential. So here's 14 volts. And you see the spacing get closer and closer as you get closer to the positive charge. That's to be expected. So yeah, so let me do the same thing here. And uh, I will fill in the gap here because, uh, so right now what I'm drawing are actual um, equipotential lines with the, the normal convention that the spacing between the equipotentials have the same spacing. That following the convention allows you to infer the electric field strength from the equipotential lines. And I do go over that in the lecture, so I want to show you what that looks like. So there's that. Now, I guess um, because the seven volt spacing is quite large, it leaves quite a bit of a gap here. It, um, so, so, you know, it doesn't show the shape. So let me fill in the gap between here and here in one volt interval so that you can, you can see the, how the shape is changing. Uh, I'm going to just do one side uh, so that, uh, you know, the other side is just going to be the mirror image. So here's one volt, two volt. What I one, really wanted you to see was how as I, yeah, there was already two, yeah, so three volt. <laughs> what I wanted you to see was how as you get closer to one of the two charges, these equipotential lines, they get uh, closer to a circular shape. And that's no accident. It uh, uh, follows the inverse square law, uh, the electricity being inverse square law. So as you get closer and closer to the positive charge, the negative charge over there has less of an impact. So, you know, when you're way out here, then the, both the positive and negative charge influences that point quite similarly. That's why this particular equipotential potential line it looks nothing like a circular, it looks all distorted. And it, the most distortion comes here where it's just a straight line going out to infinity. And as you get 
closer and closer to the positive charge, it kind of doesn't matter that there's negative charge here. When you are over here, it's still the positive charge over here. It's still the positive charge that mostly determines what the electric potential is here. So this looks similar enough to what I drew. <laughs> so let me move on. And draw the equipotential lines for uh, question nine, where I say, let's make it interesting. Um, so let me first to draw the electric field lines. One thing I have to be careful as I do that is that I need to be sure that I draw three times as many lines here as I draw it here. Um, I think I can manage drawing li nine lines here. So that means I'm going to draw uh, three lines on this side so that what I draw on the, on, on the side over there looks reasonable. So I'm gonna try to draw three lines separated out that way. And let me, uh, so I'm kind of planning these two pairs to connect to each other. And after that, nothing's gonna connect to anything because um, these, it, it, well, in, yeah, it'll just go out to infinity. I think that makes sense. So one, eight, nine. Okay, that looks about right. Let me finish uh, connecting these lines so that they connect. Oh, you know what? I think these two lines will connect to these two lines. That makes the most sense. So let me start by going radially outward and then these are gonna curve enough to come to here. That's kind of what that'll look like. And basically there's no line going out to infinity from the minus charge, which I'm fine with. Um, and yeah, I can, none of these lines can come in because, so, and out here, it's basically going to look similar to what a electric field lines from a, a point charge would look like. So I'm trying to draw it so that some of these lines, they do appear a little bit affected by the negative charge in that they're bending. This is bending the wrong way. <laughs> so something like this. And, you know, at this point, this is very qualitative because, um, because I don't, <laughs> I don't, um, it's hard to do this very precisely by hand. Now, here, there is still going to be a zero volt line, but it won't quite be, uh, quite be a straight line in the middle. For one, you can see that if I start out in the middle, there's no way it can go straight under the constraint that it's going to cross this at a perpendicular direction. So, um, so what I'm going to remember is this formula that you would see as you cover electric potential, which is that electric potential of a point charge is given by Coulomb constant times the amount of charge divided by R. So with these positive charges, I have positive potential that's going to infinite positive as I get closer to the charge. And this is producing electric potential that get infinitely negative as I go near it. So the point where, so the potential is the sum of the potential from each of these distributions. Electric potential obeys the superposition principle the same way electric field does. So I need to find the midpoint where those two contributions will add up to zero because the contribution from the negative side is smaller at the same distance, the point where I have zero volt, it should be closer. So that the contribution from this far away, larger amount of charges will be same in magnitude as the contribution from this uh, closer negative charge. So uh, let me mark this as my V equals zero point. And I can see that if I, well, because I messed up with these lines, I think I could actually draw a straight line that will go through them and look perpendicular. But what it should look like is something that bends this, um, or something actually, I think it should have bend this way. Is that right? Yeah, because uh, I think to have a zero potential still, it'll have to be closer to the negative charge. So, um, let me try to find a place where I can uh, cross reasonably. Maybe somewhere here. It looks roughly perpendicular, so I think it's gonna, yeah. <laughs> this is where I'm eyeballing. So uh, yeah, I guess maybe I didn't mess up as much with electric field lines as I thought. Um, so it, it, the V equals zero line will look something like this. 
And the rest, you know, without the guidance of the field lines, it's hard to draw them. But I think it's going to end up closing a circle like this. We'll check with the, the um, FAT simulation to see what that'll look like. And let me draw the rest of the equipotential lines. And the only thing I'm trying to make sure is that as I'm crossing these electric field lines, it looks roughly perpendicular. When you're drawing this by hand, that's really the only thing that you can check for. And you know, if I were somehow grading these, um, I gave this to you on an exam or something, then that's uh, really what I would be checking for in terms of things like a spacing, unless what you did was really unreasonable, then you know, you're eyeballing, it's not gonna be super precise. But in terms of crossing at a roughly 90 degree angle, that is something I can enforce. So this is what EQ potential lines would look like. I only drew three, uh, there's more that I can draw, you know, near the negative charge. And, um, <laughs> you know, drawing this by hand takes quite long, so let me not do that, but uh, show with the FET simulations or what that would look like. So with the FET simulation, I don't know what it'll do if I place the two additional charges here. Okay, I got rid of the EQ potential lines because they didn't apply anymore. So this is what electric field lines look like. It's a, or you have to imagine connecting some of these arrows. You can kind of see that uh, electric fields around here look more radial, as in like they look like they just come from a point charge and they bend more around here um, to, and so this looks similar enough to what I was drawing here. So let me find the V equals zero a point. Uh, oops, somewhere around here. Okay, so draw it, yeah, it looks like that, kind of circular with some distortion. Um, what this means is at this point, the positive electric potential from the positive three charges here. Remember there are three of them. Uh, yeah, let me just move them a little bit so that you can see that there are three of them. Um, <laughs> A positive uh, voltage contribution from these three positive charges is equal in magnitude to the negative voltage contribution from this one single minus charge, which is closer. And you can work that out mathematically and all that. And let me just, um, what spacing do I want? Let me do it in spacings of uh, 15. Um, so here's 15 volt, 30 volt, and 45 volts. Um, yeah, it, again, um, it, uh, because the spacing is so large, it's missing some of the features. It's just looking like circles around the charge. But if I fill in these two gaps, uh, let's say between, in the two volt increment from zero to 15 volts or something like that, I'll start at, or let me do three volt increments so that I need to do five of them. So three volts. Oh, I don't know if I expected that. Um, I did know it would be very asymmetric. Um, so uh, nine and finally the 12 volts. So that's what it looks like. No, yeah, yeah I don't know if I expected that, but <laughs> doesn't look all that surprising. So, so yeah, it's a, uh, and uh, uh, the goal of this exercise was to get people familiar enough with the uh, equipotential line so that, because when you have the charges, uh, it's easy enough to calculate the potential and field. So, so um, those graphical tools, they're not as needed. Uh, where they are more needed and helpful and really, is useful is when you actually don't know the charge distribution. That's what this uh, question 10 is showing. It's uh, showing you um, some kind of arrangement where you can say this much, which is that, um, which is that these are what the uh, voltages look like at zero volt and two volt intervals up until eight volt and minus 10 volt but you are not explicitly given any charge distribution uh, and you are just asked um, what are the electric fields? And when you have the situation, um, that's when you need to know how to read the equipotential 
lines. And here, if you look at the question, drawing the figure in consistent with the strong potentials and possible distribution of charges. Um, so looking at this, so let me uh, draw the equipotential potential lines that would uh, appear. So uh, let me use the same color I've been using for electric field. So what you first have to know is that uh, electric fields go from the positive potentials or the more positive potentials to more negative potentials. So let me start at some place so that I have a few that I can start following. So I can have electric field, let's say crossing that way in a perpendicular direction. And I kind of continue connecting this. And this is almost like how I drew the equipotential lines and then in that I'm connecting these lines while trying to make sure that whenever they cross equipotentials, this time fields crossing equipotentials, they cross in a perpendicular direction. And trying to enforce that will force you to curve your lines in certain ways and it'll look something like this. So that's one. Uh, let me just continue. Let me draw a few of them. Um, I think drawing these all very detailed way takes a lot of time and care, but I'm trying basically not to be um, so obviously wrong. <laughs> at least uh, making sure when, whenever it's crossing, it's crossing at 90 degrees and you know, something like this, that's bad, but I'm, all I'm trying to do is make sure I'm crossing at 90 degree angle. Yeah, so that's obviously not 90 degrees, so I'm not keeping that. Uh, Okay, uh, let me draw a few more lines and then I'll be able to answer the question he was asking, you know, what the charge distribution looks like and all that. Okay, so I think uh, what you see here and in the left to middle corner and what you see here are relatively easy. Here you see electric field lines going up, so you must have a positive charge here. Here you must have electric field lines coming in from the less negative portion to the more negative portion. So there must be some minor negative charge here. The difficulty is in this region here, um, because one, <laughs> you have two six volt lines. So I guess one thing that means is there can be no electric field going from here to here, because uh, if you did that, then you would have situation where point here and point here shouldn't be at the same potential. And I know they are at the same potential. So what the line must look like is maybe something like, okay, I painted myself in a little bit of a corner. Um, so let me just draw a sample of a line. Here I'm violating some of the rules, which is that um, these lines, yeah, the, the electric field density should be proportional to the electric field magnitude. For the moment, I'm not really observing that. I'm just trying to see what this uh, um, line crossings would look like. And when you trace them out, this is what they end up looking like. That, um, you know, perpendicular here, perpendicular here. So both of, so it's, a, so as you look at it, I hope you realize you must have a positive charge here. Possibly a smaller positive charge than this, because around here you have eight volts, around here you have six volts. So it makes me think it's a smaller positive charge, uh, but there must be a positive charge here so that you can have electric field going from six volt to four volt, two volt, and so on. So, so yeah, uh, I didn't quite complete everything here, but if I completed it, you would look something that looks maybe like this, and this and you stand on the negative charge. And, um, and to be able to do exercise like this well, you do need a good understanding of electric potentials, uh, EQ potential lines, and electric field lines. And um, yeah, yeah. And so it's a huge, so, you know, a lot of students like to just uh, memorize formulas or whatever. And for people who study that way, it's a graphical questions like these that'll get you because there's no formula you could have memorized that would have helped you with this. The only thing that will and can and does help you is actually understanding equipotentials.